mobile banking in Africa. Today, mobile phones are one of the most common gadgets that humans all over the world can own. Since the early 2000s, mobile phone penetration has been on the rise in Africa. In the year 1998, there were merely 2 million mobile phone users in Africa, according to the African Development Bank. In the year 2009, that number had not tripled nor multiplied by 10, but by 200 times, accounting for a whopping population of 400 million mobile phone users in the continent. Today, the number has grown to even a greater number with mobile phones accounting for a penetration rate of 67% of the total population on the continent. That means more than 1.2 billion people in the continent have access to mobile phones, with 26.5% of that population able to access the internet. The curve is expected to rise even more, as GSM projects that 80% of the population will have access to mobile phones in the next 5 years, making up for double rate of access. Hello and welcome to today's video where we will be looking at one of the markets that have grown as a result of many people having access to mobile phones, which is mobile banking. If you haven't done so, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Without further ado, let's get started and see how mobile banking is transforming African economies, accounting for large percentages of the total country's GDPs. Africa is the final untouched frontier of global development, and fintech entrepreneurs are beginning to take notice. Because over 60% of the population is still unbanked, the continent has tremendous market potential. Many Africans reside in rural regions outside of cities. As a result, many Africans still have to commute more than 30 kilometers to reach the closest banks, according to a CNN mini-documentary done in 2018. Seeing this need, several service providers took the opportunity to cash in on the rich economic prospect of bringing financial services closer to consumers in remote regions. By closer, I mean in their pockets. Africa not only has the second largest population after Asia, but it also has favorable demographics when compared to Europe and Japan's aging populations. Two-thirds of the 1.3 billion people in Africa are under the age of 24, making them a strong target market for digital financial services. Africa also boasts 21 of the world's 30 fastest growing cities. Before the COVID-19 crisis, the region had among the world's highest economic growth rates. The continent has the fastest expanding mobile market and the number of mobile money accounts has been rising dramatically due to the large rural populations and vast distances between them and the closest towns. Since 2011, the value of mobile financial service transactions has surged by 900%. The fact that 80% of the population has a mobile device has aided this expansion. By 2025, it is expected that two-thirds of the population who own a smartphone. Kenya has been at the forefront of mobile payment technology for the last 18 years, with M-Pesa providing mobile-to-mobile -mobile payments through SMS. Its mobile money services have been used by 50 million people monthly, accounting for 16 million transactions every day. M-Pesa's success demonstrates that African customers are willing to accept seamless, cashless banking solutions. You may be curious as to how this service works. We'll walk you through the process of getting your phone loaded with cash to the final step when the other person receives a confirmation message that they've received the money. Remember that you don't need a bank account, a smartphone, or an internet connection to complete the transaction. With enough Mpesa agents, one within 100 meters reach, you can load the money to your phone. When the cash reflects in your mobile, you only be required to enter the recipient's mobile phone number, and just like that, the transaction is complete. With three simple steps, you can be able to buy a newspaper, your lunch, pay for your vacation, and so on. According to Rosengard, a Harvard Kennedy School adjunct lecturer in public policy's most recent study article, owing to mobile banking, the percentage of Kenyans having access to a financial account has increased from 42% in 2011 to 75% in 2014. Financial inclusion increased by more than 200% among the poorest residents from 21% in 2011 to 63% in 2014, a jump of more than 200% in only three years. The ease and cheap cost of mobile banking is what makes it so appealing, said Rosengard. According to Rosengard's study, mobile banking has changed the way Kenyans handle their money. 50 million customers use Safaricom's M-Pesa, the country's most popular service, to send 15 billion Kenyan shillings in payments each day, the equivalent of 150 million US dollars. Kenya has surpassed other nations in terms of financial inclusion as a result of this rapid expansion. Kenya is about treble the rate of low-income nations globally in terms of individuals having access to bank account, compared to other sub-Saharan African countries. Kenyan households now have more financial security because of the mobile banking revolution. 
According to a 2014 research, persons who used M-Pesa were able to cope with large income shocks, such as poor harvest, job loss, or a failing company, without having to cut down on their household expenditures. They mostly survived these storms by receiving financial assistance from relatives and friends through M-Pesa. In contrast, Kenyans who do not use M-Pesa had to cut their household expenditure by an average of 7% as a result of financial difficulties, according to the report. Mobile banking isn't the first new technology that has aided nations in bypassing certain phases of economic and technological development and advancing more swiftly. In the 2000s, cell phones had this impact in sub-Saharan Africa. Countries were able to bypass the landline telephone era and quickly deliver contemporary communication to their populations as mobile phone adoption grew. Kenya's mobile phone ownership rate of 82% is currently almost equal to that of the United States at 89%. Africa has become the perfect breeding environment for this next generation of banking offers, with over half of the world's mobile money services and the continent's mobile-only nature. Bank Zero is attracting the most attention because its founders are former top executives from First National Bank, including former CEO Michael Jordan. First National Bank evolved into South Africa's most innovative bank, launching the first banking app in 2010 and winning a slew of global awards and accolades for innovation. As its name suggests, Bank Zero Mutual Bank won't charge fees and will focus on savings. Although it won't offer credit, Mastercard will supply a credit card if users ask for one. In the meanwhile, Africa's mobile money market continues to grow. Kenya's M-Pesa, the first of these services, stated that it will enable users to send and receive payments through PayPal in Western Union. Pesa, which is 50 million East African users, can now interact with PayPal's 254 million worldwide users and Western Union's 500,000 agents in more than 200 countries across the world. It has enabled payment gateways all around the globe to participate in the regional mobile money trend. The fact that the 11-year-old service has gone worldwide thanks to these collaborations is a testament to its success. According to the Communications Authority of Kenya, M-Pesa performed 581 million transactions for its 23 million customers in Kenya, valued at 14.6 billion or 162 million US dollars each day in the three months to June 2018. M-Pesa handles more than 1.7 billion transactions every year, accounting for more than half of Kenya's GDP. MTN and Orange, two of Africa's leading cellular providers, have not been left behind too. They announced a mobile wallet partnership that would enable MTN and Orange's mobile money customers to transact across networks. According to MTN Group CEO Rob Shatter, the company aims to be Africa's largest supplier of mobile financial services. Nigeria, South Africa, and Kenya, which have the reputation of being Africa's mobile money pay setter with M-Pesa, have the greatest levels of mobile banking activity. According to MEF, a mobile trade group which analyzed data from 10,000 respondents in 13 countries found this to be the case. According to the MEF, 15% of all mobile media users analyzed made some kind of mobile payment or transaction to acquire products in 2018, with 7% of them using a mobile wallet. While mobile banking is common and active in most markets, mobile wallets, which are typically linked to NFC-based transactions and services, have yet to reach mass market adoption, according to the MEF. M-Pesa, which has proven a huge success in Kenya, has now spread outside the country's borders. In an interview with the then Safaricom CEO Michael Joseph, in the previous Dimension CNN documentary, done by the famous news anchor Ben Quest, shared that they had entered the South African market. This was in August 2010, when NetBank and Vodacom partnered to establish M-Pesa. M-Pesa had a couple of hundred thousand clients in South Africa, according to Vodacom CEO Shamil Joseph as of the first quarter of 2014. When asked about the news, a Vodacom spokesperson informed My Broadband that it is part of the ongoing redesign with a complete update scheduled for early 2014. NetBank said in December 2013 that it planned to relaunch M-Pesa, its mobile money service, on a new IT platform that would connect directly to banks. The M-Pesa rollout has provided NetBank and Vodacom with great learning insights and the M-Pesa product will be relaunched soon on a new IT platform, said Ilz Wagner. NetBank's Head of Digital Innovation and Payments. She said, the platform will interface directly with banks and will involve the growth of the distribution channel to put on additional points of sale and more transaction capabilities. Not every cloud has a silver lining, and mobile banking is no exception to this. Mobile money for oil's potential is not without its obstacles and perils. These are, number one, challenges in infrastructure. Mobile money requires telecommunication infrastructure, which might be costly upfront. Because of the continent's lack of broadband infrastructure, about 25% penetration as of 2018, there will be limited interaction with other digital financial products. 
Mobile money is often dependent on SMS technology, making it difficult to connect it to internet-based digital financial solutions. Number two, operational risks. Mobile money, according to evidence, also provides opportunities for fraud. Many mobile money providers, according to research, are susceptible to data breaches as a result of insufficiently secured communications, which might enable an attacker to take money. Mobile banking has made an impact in various business sectors in Africa. Despite some challenges in the region, the odds are evident to be in favor of the development of the platform. Analysts show a fruitful future and all we can do is wait and see if that will come true. Wrapping up, have you ever used these services? Let's talk about the experience in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe, explore the channel for more videos, and until the next one, peace.